Welcome to the Sizer online tutorial. In this video, we will go through the different information generated in the result pages once you run the design. Following the video where we demonstrated how to make a model of a two-story structure inside concept mode, in this video we will go through the results once the loads have been applied. By running the design, a result sheet similar to this one will appear. First, the company and project information that you have entered in their respective section in the settings are shown here. Sizer separates results by group, and groups are further separated by their level. As you can see, suggested sections are generated for each group of elements that were left unknown. In our example, since most of the dimensions values were left as unknowns, Sizer generated dimensions that would support the loads according to the member type, material, and grade that we have defined. If every configuration detail of an element was adjusted without leaving any unknowns, the design member would appear as it is. Next, in the critical members and design criteria section, members are also separated by their group. For each group, you will see what member was critical to the design, followed by its critical criterion and the ratio of analysis slash design values. The ratios should be less than 1.0 in order for the sections to be adequate. In the event where the software is not able to render details of a section left unknown that would resist the applied load based on other information entered, no section found would appear. Under all of this information is the design note. Here you will find reminders and details about the design result sheet. By going in the view tab in the top toolbar, more information is accessible such as results by member, materials list, and reaction at base. Here again, results by member is separated by the levels of the structure. Every member designed in concept mode, even those that were attributed a suggested section when left unknown, is detailed in this page. In fact, beside the name of the members, you will find each dimension that was generated by Sizer. These dimensions are based on the type and material that we have defined for each members in the previous video, where the combination of their respective details generated is the most efficient to withstand the load applied. In the following columns, the tabulated values consist of the performance ratios of the analysis values divided by the material resistance. The information displayed include the positive and negative bending moments, the shear and axial force, the deflection, as well as the fire resistance criteria. More importantly, the last column shows the most critical case acting upon the member, which is the highest value between the cases we have just mentioned. Now, let's take a look at the materials list section. Each member is separated by its respective group, either beam, column, joist or wall. Beside the name of the members is listed the type, species, grade and dimension of the material generated that the software recommends to use. For the beam and column group, information on the length or height respectively, number of plies, the number of pieces designed with a certain length or height, and the total length required for each combination of materials is presented. As for the joists and wall groups, beside the combination of materials suggested and the name of the element, Information regarding the maximum length and the number of pieces required for that length is displayed. Next to that, values on the total length and surface area covered by the different elements are shown. The total area is presented at the bottom of each group type. The information provided in this view can be used to create a preliminary list for costing the required material for a project. Finally, the reactions at base view illustrates the loads each element solicited at the base, in this case the six columns and two walls designed on the first floor, along with the reactions due to the loads applied. A legend is provided in the bottom describing the signification of each letters. That being said, the reactions at the base in our structure consist of dead, live, and snow load cases. You have to keep in mind that concept mode is just a preliminary design tool because of these assumptions, as explained in video 6.1, Concept Mode Introduction. Even though the design results generated in Concept Mode gives a good first idea of the critical section solicited, a more accurate design check can be done by transferring members into beam mode or column mode. For the purpose of this example, 
we will transfer the center beam B2 from the first floor into beam mode. To do this, you first have to select the beam from beam view and then you can set the mode as beam mode. As you can see, the information entered in concept mode has also been transferred into beam mode. Only now, it is possible to design the supports for bearing and notch. Since the beam is rested on columns C2 and C5, we will define the bearing configuration as it is listed in the material list view, which is a 4 ply 38 by 184 number 3 stud SPF built up column. Applying this on all support and leaving other information as they were inside concept mode, a wide selection of section recommended by Sizer is generated. Before choosing a section, the list of suggested sections that pass the check is available along with the bending ratio, shear ratio, and other useful information. Detailed information of the design check calculation sheet is provided once a section has been selected. Once you have run the design and selected a section, the analysis results and diagrams pages become available. First, in the analysis results, you will find the type of load, distribution, if there is a pattern loading, as well as the location and magnitude of the loads for the elements that are affected by the loading of the beam in question, which is the center beam on the first floor. The second table displays the different load combination used to determine the critical load case and the pattern of the load. By scrolling down a bit, Magnitudes of both the shear and bending force is found next to each other of the load case numbers defined in the previous table, as well as the span bending. Information on the KD factor used for the load combinations is found throughout the rest of the table. Finally, the analysis diagram displays the reaction, shear, bending, and total deflection diagrams for the beam that is being designed. The reaction diagram shows the wind uplift load and the bearing reactions at the support. The shear and bending diagrams show the locations of the maximum shear and bending moment points, respectively, on both positive and negative sides. In addition to this, the load combination which was critical to the design is also displayed. In the last diagram, results on the deflection located at various points is shown with the critical total deflection illustrated with a red dot.